welcome to today's video. My name is Trisha and we are going to be talking about some of the biggest mistakes that I have ever made. Um, this was a video idea from one of you guys, so thank you guys so much. At first, and I feel like I've had this recommendation to do this video before, but I never wanted to do it because it just sounds so negative and sad and I don't ever want to have to say that I have regretted any of my animals because each one is so special and they each brought something to my life that I love. Some of it is just bad decisions that I made that I wasn't aware of while purchasing or before purchasing and it ended in heartbreak or stress and so I feel like it's a good idea to share my experiences and my mistakes that way you guys can learn to avoid them yourselves uh, maybe some of you guys can relate it's important to talk about mistakes i know it seems so hard especially when people are in the public's eye like me making videos like this people like wait for me to mess up like they want it to happen so they could be like ha you're not perfect and it's like I am absolutely not perfect I'm not a professional I'm not even like a lot of you guys are more experienced than I am like this is just me growing up learning about these animals and going through all these experiences and of course making mistakes too so we are going to dive into some of the animals that I regret purchasing and I will go into why and what my mistake was and hopefully this will be helpful because if it's helpful then it's completely worth it. So the first animal that I regret getting I've talked about before and it is my Tokei Gecko. So with this situation what happened was I had a friend who was breeding Tokei Geckos and I have never been interested in them. Uh, because I know how their personalities are. I know that they're very difficult to gain trust with and that they bite and I get very intimidated by that. Me personally, I enjoy keeping reptiles because they're relaxing. It's like a therapy to me. If I have like anxiety or I'm upset, whatever, go and handle a slow moving snake or a chameleon and I feel better. So tokes are definitely like one of those animals to get if you like feisty, crazy experiences, and that is just not me. So off the bat, I wasn't really interested in ever owning a Tokei Gecko, um, but my friend who was breeding them kept saying that they had one that they really wanted to give me, and they said that it was completely tame, and they sent pictures of them holding it and everything, and they said it would be like not like the experience I would expect it to be with any other Tokei, and it would just be calming and it would also be a good idea because it would show people that tokes can be tamed down as well and I really like the idea of educating about that because it's important to know that like not all animals are just monsters especially the ones with like the bad reputations that everyone kind of hates on so I really liked that idea and I was like you know what let's give it a go so I met up with my friend and I held the tokei gecko and she was completely calm and it was amazing. My mind was blown. I was like, okay, you know, I'm holding this animal. It's calm. They're telling me it's going to be calm. So I'm going to bring it home. I bring it home. And once I put that Tokei Gecko in a new enclosure, it became a completely different animal, which is something to be aware of because with Tokei Geckos, they are very intelligent animals. And it's basically like when you put them in a new environment, they may completely change personalities and you have to start over and build all of that trust with them again. Um, it was kind of good because I was like, well, she did it once, so maybe she can do it again. I tried for months with this toke and all it did was stress me out so bad and I couldn't get her out of the enclosure to do like proper cleaning and I was just beyond stressed out and it just was not the experience I thought it was gonna be and it just wasn't for me. So that was my learning curve there. Um, it all ended up turning out really good though because my friend Michelle had always really wanted a Tokei Gecko. So she came over and she took her. Her name is Dahlia and she is still with Michelle. And it's funny because she was still feisty with Michelle. She still has her days, but Michelle did a lot of work with her over the years. And like she has pictures with her and she is able to handle her. 
Um, she can be a little sassy sometimes. She really is an amazing Tokay gecko. It just wasn't a good fit for me. And I should have realized that and not completely relied on like the fact that if you hold an animal and it's behaving a certain way, it'll be that way when you bring it home. Because a lot of the times people go to reptile shows, they hold like a ball python, they're like, oh, it's calm. And then they bring it home and it's not calm anymore and it has a completely different personality. So you need to be aware that like things like that can change. I made an entire video on personalities of reptiles and that this whole experience definitely goes into that. Um, so that was my regret because I still went through with getting this animal even though I had my doubts and it ended up not being for me. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will help give some people some perspective and think about some things before they decide to get an animal. Number two is purchasing wild caught animals. I have done this twice and the first time I did it, I wasn't aware and the second time I actually wasn't aware either. So the first time I did something horrible, I ordered a satanic leaf tail gecko off the internet. It was, I think, Outback Reptiles is what it's called. Backwater Reptiles? I can't, it was so long ago, I'm like forgetting. I'm, I'm going to put the name here somewhere. Um, but I ordered this gecko and I was obsessed with him. This was Nosferatu. Um, I had him before I ever moved here. I had him for, I think, either one to two years, and then he passed away out of nowhere. Um, I didn't know that that place that I bought him from, a lot of the animals are wild caught. Um, and he may have, I don't even know how old he was. I don't know if he had an illness. I mean, he didn't come from a good place. So I didn't have him very long. And so it's not a good situation. Of course, if you want a healthy animal, you want to know how old it is, it's very important to go to a breeder and it's captive bred. Um, the other mistake I made was with Chancho, my blue tongue skink. I went to a reptile show and I saw him there and I got him from LLL Reptile. And I had been watching their videos for years. I thought they had all captive bred animals too. And I also wasn't aware that at reptile shows, if it is a wild caught animal, they don't mark that it's wild caught. I had the assumption that if anything that was wild caught would be marked as such, and it's not at reptile shows. So another learning lesson. Um, if you are looking for an animal and you're not sure and it's not marked wild caught, they never are. You need to inquire and ask about it. I didn't because I just assumed, oh, it's from LLL Reptile and I think they kept a breed and they don't always do that. So I found out after the fact when I brought him home and he's been feisty ever since and unhandleable, but I love him all the same. I don't regret getting him. I just regret the way that I purchased him and my lack of knowledge while doing so for him and Nosferatu. Number three, I, when I first moved here, I got a lot of crested geckos and gargoyle geckos. I don't even know the number that I had. Uh, but my plan was to breed and I did start breeding and I ended up with way too many babies and it was stressful. There's already so many crested geckos in the hobby. I wasn't contributing anything. I was literally just overproducing animals that I shouldn't have been producing in the first place because there are others that need homes as it is. Um, so that was what I learned and that's why I stopped breeding them and then I just had all of these breeders and then my health was like really terrible at the time and I was just very overwhelmed so I ended up like rehoming most of them. Um, so now I only have two crested geckos and two gargoyle geckos before I had way more than that. So that is a very important lesson for me. I don't think I should have ever gotten into breeding and I just bought all of those animals and just became overwhelmed. And I feel like it's very easy to do with animals like that, especially like ball pythons or crested geckos or even leopard geckos. They're so easy to care for and there's so many different kinds out there that it makes you wanna keep getting more. And you need to realize like you can get to a point where it becomes overwhelming and also I think it's just an important lesson about debating if you should start breeding or not and the reasons why you're doing it. I basically just wanted to do it because I thought it would be fun and it was fun but it was unnecessary and it just went against like my morals in the end and I just didn't feel like I was contributing anything positive in the end and I was overwhelmed so it just wasn't a good situation and definitely a big mistake. Number four, um, this was my very first snake, which 
I technically just say it's Bowie, but technically it was a ball python. And I ordered this snake online. I didn't really know anything about snakes. I was scared of snakes at this point, and I was hoping for a good experience. This is like so not what you should be doing, um, especially if you're afraid of snakes, because exactly like what could happen that's bad is what happened with me. I got this snake. It was extremely defensive and nippy like to the point where I would just walk past the glass and it would be just striking at me through the glass trying to get me it just hated my guts and this just instilled even more fear in me and it was just a stressful situation. I ended up rehoming that snake not because I just felt like I couldn't do it and I wanted to give up. I was living with my sister at the time and she told me I could only have one snake and I secretly purchased Bowie. I don't even know if she knows about this still. But I purchased Bowie because she was at the pet store and she was like everything I wanted. She was calm, she was handleable, and that was the experience I wanted with a snake. So I got her. My sister unknowingly doesn't know that I have two snakes in the house and she, I basically brought up how I wanted another snake and I was trying to like let her know I got another snake in your house and I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that's also a mistake. Don't do that, that's not respectful. I was a dumb young person. Um, so basically she was like, okay, if you want to get another snake, then you have to rehome the other snake. And so I had to rehome my ball python. I'm sure he's doing great now. Maybe he calmed down. I did want to keep working with him, but my sister was like one snake only. So I had to rehome him because I already had Bowie. So that was that situation. Just a ton of mistakes on my end. And number five, is my boa constrictor vendetta and this is the heartbreak one because vendetta he was a boa constrictor he was like literally my dream snake i love boa constrictors and he was so beautiful i had so many amazing experiences with him and he was growing so fast and completely out of nowhere after i think maybe like a year a year and a half of owning him he just passed away. I had no clue. I literally went to check on him and he was just gone. And it was the most shocking, like heart wrenching. I don't even like thinking about it. I honestly don't even think about him in general too much because it is just, it plummets my heart. Like I, I can't do it. It's so difficult. Um, it was just the shock of that situation was unreal. Um, but upon doing more research, apparently, first of all, he was a specific morph, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll try and research and see if I can find it in my old posts. Um, but the morph that he was, there had been some research done that there's something wrong with that morph. And a lot of them do tend to just die after like a year, a year and a half unexpectedly. And this is something I wasn't aware of, and it's honestly why I'm afraid to ever get a bow constrictor again, especially if it's any morphs. When I did purchase him, the um, breeder also said he had a lot of other genetics in him that he wasn't even sure of. So the morph wasn't like a for sure thing, and there was just a lot of mystery to it. And I did more research, and it, it, there's not too much research on the situation, but a lot of boa constrictor morphs, because they're kind of new to the hobby, and people are learning more about them and the genetics of it, a lot of them can have genetic issues because of those morphs, and it can cause a sudden death, and it's usually around after a year, a year and a half that it does happen. So I wish I knew that to save myself the complete and utter heartbreak of that situation. Um, and that's why I felt like I needed to mention it. Just be careful. If you want a boa constrictor, uh, definitely research the morphs that you are interested in and just be very careful. Um, yeah, I see other people doing it successfully. And like the thing is, a lot of the times you see all of these beautiful morphs for boa constrictors, but they're always babies. You don't really see them when they're fully grown. It's because a lot of them don't make it and there has to be some type of genetic issue going on there and hopefully people will investigate this more and will have more answers in the future but i wasn't aware of it and it was just a really heartbreaking situation so those are my regretted mistakes that i have made with my animals and i mean i don't 
I'm glad that I had all of them so that way I could learn from these lessons and be able to help others. So at least I have that. Um, each one was special to me in my heart and not having them anymore is really rough. Um, but I hope that this video was helpful and I'm human, I make mistakes. So I'm gonna share that with you guys as well. Um, I hope that you have a great day and thank you for being here today.